Hi everyone, so as you know I've been a councillor for many years now, I've been a councillor since 2009, I've also been a coach since 2017 and I do specialise in the areas of depression. I've also had personal experience of my sister who struggles with depression. So what I wanted to do is make this video really to talk more about the difference when you're working with a client who is depressed as opposed to just working with clients with other issues. The main thing I feel is that sometimes counsellors will use one approach and they'll do a one size fits all and they will not recognise that you know their client isn't ready for that or just because there's a theory saying that you should work with depressed clients in a particular way it doesn't always work out when you're actually doing it. So I've got six things really, seven actually, that how I work and it's just to give you an example. If you're someone that is depressed and you've always thought, I want to start therapy, but I'm worried, I'm concerned that my client, my therapist is going to push me in the wrong direction, then this might be helpful. So the first thing is do not set challenges or tasks that are beyond your client. This is a major issue. If your client is currently saying that they're so depressed that they do not get out of bed for days or when they do get up they don't get dressed or they don't get washed or they are not sleeping or they barely eat you don't want to go you know into rescue mode as a counsellor and start setting all these major challenges you know I want you to get up every day do lots of exercise go for walks go to the shop um, get fully dressed, put on your makeup, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be too overwhelming for the client. So how I work as a counsellor is I meet the client where they are because if you can see the end goal, which might be in six weeks' time, they might be able to get out of the house and go for a walk. But right now, that's too much for them. So I might set a little task. So my task might be that you get up and you take a shower and then you don't have to leave the house you don't have to get dressed if you're not ready for that. It might just be that taking that shower every single day is progress because you've got out of bed, you've not just kind of st st stayed in your night clothes and also having the shower is going to bring energy as well because it, it's also motivating you because you're going to have to take action. Another thing is to prepare for your client not being the same every time they come to see you. Clients with depression, and this is just my experience of my sister as well, and her, how one day you could meet with her and she would be really motivated, she'd be really um, energetic, she'd be conversating and engaging. Another day, or the same day, later in the afternoon, she would walk past and ignore you because so, so much things were probably going on in her head at that time which we was not aware about. So prepare for your client. Don't be that type of therapist who tries to bring your client into the room in a certain way that you feel they should be. If they're in a particular look, having a low mood or they're having a specific day, work with them from that point. I don't judge my clients, I don't expect them to be a certain way, I don't have expectations on them. So with depressed clients, you're only going to drive them away if they feel that they have to be someone else in the room. The whole point is they spend their lives pretending to be someone that they're not pretending to be happy when they're not. So in the counselling room for me, they can be themselves if they're having a low day, which moves on to the second, third way of working, which is I don't say to my clients that they can't talk about suicidal thoughts. I do obviously set boundaries around suicidal thoughts. I'm not just going to say you're going to speak to me about hurting yourself and I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit and listen. I'm not going to be able to do that. However, I will explore with my clients how, you know, what's going on with these thoughts. We'd look at management. We'd look at ways that we can come together and work together on these thoughts. So it is also about being courageous enough sometimes to refer your clients to see a doctor or a medical health professional. They might sometimes, you know, I don't want clients to feel you're taking over from them, so I will never do anything without my client's permission, unless it's um, breaking confidentiality barriers. I will never try to persuade or force or push them into certain things. It will always be a collaborative discussion, but if there is something I feel that they 
would benefit from and they need, I will try to encourage that, but we'll do that as a team. The fourth thing or fifth thing <laughs> I've lost count is allow your client to be heard. Counselors sometimes have a tendency to want to show off about their skills and what they can do and clients with depression have got so much things going on in their head a lot of times, they're hearing voices, they've got negative talk, they've got people around them telling them to cheer up, snap out of it, giving them advice. Sometimes they just want to be able to talk and to offload without being told anything, they just want to be heard. So that is a key point of when I'm working with my depressed clients that I allow them to do that. And the final one is to celebrate progress, the small steps that your clients make. It's really important for you to be able to say, do you know, you spent an hour, I was working with a client many years ago and we, I set a challenge for her to make a cup of tea. When she comes from work, she used to go straight up to her room and stay in her room all day, wouldn't interact with her parents, wouldn't interact with the family. She wanted to, but she couldn't because of her, her depression. So the challenge was to, when she comes from work, before she retreats upstairs, to literally make a cup of tea for everyone, sit downstairs for at least an hour and either drink the tea, watch TV, but something, so it meant she couldn't. And what happened is, once she started doing that, she didn't want to go upstairs to her room and retreat from her family. She was enjoying being around them. She felt it became a routine. So we celebrated that. We saw that as progress. I was very saying to her, you know, well done. And I think we clients sometimes with depression need to hear someone say to them, well done for you for getting out of bed. Well done that you managed to eat something today. Well done for, you know, walking to the shops. It might be little things to, to us, but to them it is major. So I think that's the sort of way that I work. So if you are a client and you're watching this, not a client, sorry, if you're someone that potentially wants to seek counselling and you're watching this, then feel free to get in touch with me. You can either leave a message with me on here or you can go to my Facebook page, which is Marianne Hanson Counsellor and Coach. I'll leave all of my other contact details in the description and you can um, definitely get in touch with me. But thank you and for everyone for watching. Please feel free to like, to share, to subscribe and to leave your comments. Take care. Bye.